something, you got to say something. Crystal, catch this. You got to get on stuff quickly and promptly because if you don't, then distance will develop. And what happens is when people perceive there's an offense, we begin to go out onto our own silos and build up our own walls. And then sometimes some stuff is based upon a misunderstanding or it was lost in translation. So this is why you got to promptly, if you see something that offends you, listen to me, if you love the person, y'all in a relationship, if it's a friend, if it's a coworker, I got to work with you, let me at least feel and test the waters and see if you are a reasonable person because some people are not reasonable. Can I preach in here the way I feel it? Sometimes you can confront some people and they will never see what they did was wrong. So once you establish that, okay, you off. You crazy. You ain't playing with a full deck because you only see things from your angle. And let me tell y'all this. Stop trying to placate into the hands of people who try to play reverse psychology on you when you know you didn't do nothing wrong to them, but they want to act like you did something wrong to them. I ask people, well, what, what, what did I do? Well, well. I guess you will. I know. I didn't do nothing. So I'm not going to sit up here and placate to your all oh God. Holler back at me if you hear me up in this house. Can I give you all this? One thing I'm not going to do is grovel. I'm not going to grovel. I'm not going to grovel. I'm not going gonna, I'm not gonna to grovel to get you to like me because some people may not like you and you didn't do nothing. Come on. And if I didn't do nothing for you not to like me, I can't do nothing to get you to like me. Y'all not helping me preach up in this house. You got to get on it promptly. Watch this real quick on this point. The Bible says you got to get on it promptly because bitterness will take root in your heart and bitterness will begin to develop. And if you sit down quiet and silently on something, it's smoldering inside of you, getting you angry. Now you got stress pent up in you. And they say ulcers are not formed by what we eat. Ulcers are formed at what's eating at us. And there's some stuff you got to get off your chest. You got to say, hold on, I feel like this is going to be a problem later on. I just thought you and I would sit down over a cup of coffee and tell me, am I perceiving this wrong or am I perceiving it right but we're going to have a civil discussion about the situation that's at hand and I feel like I got to do it promptly because I'm not going to sit here smoldering with anger inside of me and resentment and I don't share it with you my wife and I were in Hawaii a couple years ago and they had what they call inactive volcanoes active volcanoes you see them the lava's coming up out of it Inactive volcanoes have the same lava, but it's sitting there smoldering silently. And there's some people who sit with bitterness, anger, clamor, rage. How you doing? I'm all right. How you doing? Come on. Y'all know when people are quick to say that. How you doing? Fine. How are you? You're like, Dang, I just asked. How you doing? Come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Touch somebody, tell them promptly. You got to get on it promptly because Hebrews chapter 12 says this. It says, don't let bitterness take a root in your heart. Because here it is. First, there is an offense. Then there's the bitterness that builds. And that bitterness is a root. And after you've got the root, the bitterness produces a fruit. Now, I'm saying stuff and I'm going over the top because I'm erupting because I never got it out early on that I had an issue. Can I read this to you, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31? Get rid of all anger, malice, clamor, wrath, and bitterness because it's hurting you more than it's hurting the person. Touch somebody and tell them, get on it promptly. Forgive quickly. Apologize quickly. Let it go quickly. Discuss it quickly. And don't keep rehearsing it and talking about it. Put it behind you and move forward with your life. Forgetting the things which are behind me. I'm reaching forward to the things which lie ahead. Because some of us are spending so much time in our past that we can't step over into our future. Your future is calling you forward. But the pain of your past is dragging you backward. Now you're going to hold on to your past or you're going to move forward with your life. I don't know about y'all, but my future is too bright. My future is too great for me to hold on and be a slave to the pain of my past. 
You got to get over it. Number four, I got five for y'all today. Number four, here it is. You got to do it peacefully. Let the church say peacefully. Here it is. Let me give this to you. I told y'all, I'm going to say it again. We are not, as Christians, supposed to fight, bite, scratch, claw, cuss. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. No, I need every piece of my mind. I, need, I, I can't get no more pieces away. You can have a piece of my love. I, no. I'm going to hold it. You're going to fall into pieces giving everybody a piece. Oh, preach, boy. No, I need peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, so I can't give you a peace, P-I-E-C-E. -E. I need to let some stuff go. The Bible says this. Live at peace with all men. What are you saying, Pastor? Live in peace. You are not supposed to scratch, fight, bite, cuss. Well, well Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Yeah, he did. You got four cheeks. Come on. Somebody like, I got to give all four of them up. Yeah, give all four of them up, buddy. <laughs> Peacefully. I'm going to give it to you real quick. Here it is. Live at peace. What do you mean? Let me give you all these principles real quick. If you're writing, write this down. If you're online, listen to the other person. Listen without looking to respond. Some of us get in conversations and we want to hear something. Have you ever seen, have you ever been in a conversation with a person and they, when, when y'all in the discussion and they start talking, people do this. Like, I'm listening for you to trigger something. Don't listen like that. Listen with an open mind to hear the person's heart. And then you repeat back to them what they said. Deaconess Gordon, she gave me a gift of this. Listen to the person. Then you say, okay. If I hear you right, this is what I heard. I hear you saying that you're offended by this or this is the way you looked at that. Okay, now first of all, let's dissect that and look at that. You got to listen to what they said because you will not gain the respect of you trying to reconcile if they see you're not paying them attention when you are listening. You not only have to listen, this is what I call the high five of resolving conflict. Turn to your neighbor and give him a high five. Give him a high five. Tell him I'm giving you the high five. You got to listen, then you got to own up. That's number two on that. You got to own up, and sometime owning up means you have to look at yourself and take an introspective look and say, perhaps I did say this or do this, which would cause you to perceive this. I am going to own up to my part and my share and to what maybe has ruptured the relationship. Then number three, you got to apologize. Y'all, you got to learn how to humble yourself and apologize and tell the person you are trying to reconcile with, I was wrong, I want to get this thing right. Then number four, you got to forgive. If you don't forgive, you cannot be forgiven. And sometime reconciliation is not just about our relationship, it's about my relationship with God. Because Jesus said, if you don't forgive, I can't forgive you. Now, I don't know about y'all. Some of y'all perfect. But I need mercy every day. I need forgiveness every day. I need grace every day. I need God to cover my faults every day. Some of y'all got quiet. It's some stuff you got going on you don't even know is offensive to God. If you can't forgive other people and overlook their offenses, then that means God can't forgive you. So really me apologizing, it really ain't even about you. It's about me and my relationship with God. So I've got to get this right so I can keep my stuff with him. Is there anybody up in this house who just wants to be right with God. Last one, dismiss it. Quit bringing it up. Quit rehearsing the hurt. I know it happened. Well, I remember that one time you said, come down 10 years ago. And y'all know people let you know, some people keep score, boy. Y'all know some, pe some people live their life trying to get a lick back. I'm going to get you back for that. Don't be that kind of person. Tell somebody, tell them, let it go. Let it go. Get rid of it. Get it out of your life. 
I wish I had a witness up in here. I feel like preaching to deliver you. I dare you to just start thinking of people who wronged you and say, I'm letting it go. From this day forward, I'm no longer going to hold on to it because if I hold on to it, it's going to hold on to me. And I need to be free. I need the freedom of forgiveness. Somebody in here stand up and give God some glory because won't he make you clean on the inside? Won't he wash you and make you feel free. Give God some glory. If you've been forgiven, forgive somebody else. Forget about it. Let it go. Let me give this to you real quick. Last one. Last one. Here it is. Some people you cannot reconcile with. Can we be real? Some people you can't. Come on now. Some people you can. The Bible says this. Romans chapter 13. Write this down. Live at peace with all men, if possible. Come on. All your enemies are not going to be reconciled with you. All the people who don't like you may never like you. But you got to get to the point that you know how to manage the situation without it messing you up. Last one. Number one, you have got, if you're going to resolve conflict, do it personally, do it privately, do it promptly, do it peacefully. Last one, do it prayerfully. Because you need the grace of God to give you the strength and the ability and to guard your heart and mind. He will keep you in perfect peace, but you got to keep your mind stayed on him. And God will guard your heart and mind to help you to deal with situations that you really wish would change. But here's what you got to write this down, please. If you don't get nothing else, some stuff is not problems to be solved. It's tensions to be managed. Okay, what do you mean by that? I have to go to a job. They don't like me. I've prayed about it for a year. They haven't left. Neither has God opened up a door for me to leave. The problem is not solved, but God, I need you to give me the grace to manage the tension in this job. I need to be able to go up in there and not let the fact they don't like me keep me from being productive and working with them on this project. I need the grace of God to know that they don't like me, tried to dog me, really wish I would leave. God, give me the ability. So could it be that God allowed you to have the problem so you would learn how to pray? Because if you didn't have the problem, you wouldn't really pray. So God doesn't move the problem because God is trying to get you to pray. Could it be that child that's cutting up you trying to raise was really designed not as a burden but a blessing because if you didn't pray you wouldn't be able to have the this grace to raise that child and keep from going off on them. Could it be God gave you a nasty neighbor and he's not removing them but he wants to give you the grace to be able to pray for the neighborhood. Could it be that God let you deal with the problem on that job so he could go before you and his grace be with you that you can still be productive despite them trying to pull me down. Is there anybody here who can say the only reason I'm here today is not because I haven't had tensions to manage. It's just God has helped me manage my mouth, my anger, my frustration, my emotions, and I've learned in every situation there is blessed consolation. Is there anybody here who can give God some glory for his grace that has not only kept you but it keeps you operating in your space. There's a grace that God will give you. Can you imagine? Let's be real for a moment. Watch this. Jesus knew Judas was stealing and would betray him. He knew it. He, he's God. He knew it. Still, Come on, follow me. He knew it. Yet he had a certain grace to still let him do what he did. Can I give this to you? Judas did more for Jesus than all the other disciples. Because had you not betrayed me, they would have never crucified me. Had they never crucified me, they would have never buried me. Had they never buried me, I never would have rose from the dead. Had I never rose from the dead, you wouldn't have salvation. 
salvation wouldn't be brought to the world. You trying to fight Judas. Judas is really your biggest blessing. You trying to hold them back. You better just learn how to give it to God because God has a funny way of causing all things, even small things, to work together for your good. Is there anybody here who could just give God some glory for his grace? Sometimes it's a tension, it's a tension to be managed. I'm going to give this testimony because it fits into serendipity. We just left out of that. It dovetails serendipity into conflict resolution. I'm in seminary right now. Some of y'all know that. Went to Bible college for five years. When I finished Bible college, I was going into seminary, but I didn't. Uh, I was still managing my shop, became a pastor, so I decided later on after I had my children, things were right, I'll go back to seminary. I go to seminary, and it's going good. I had a couple good professors. Last semester, the one before this, I had a professor who disrespected me in every way you could imagine. Now, mind you, I humble myself going to the class. I'm going out of town. I go to Chicago to a conference. There's my poster, the poster child for the school. I'm dealing with this stuff in the class with this guy. I'm like, wow. On one night, it got so bad that he threatened me. He got mad by something I said in terms of my response to the question and the discussion. And he said, if you don't be quiet, I'm going to put you out of my class, and I'm going to take your points for the night. I'm like, wow, I pay you to teach me. Go figure. So at the end of the class, he came, apologized, all that. I'm out of the class the next week because I had to speak somewhere else. So one of my friends, and uh, he happened to be my white brother, he quit the class of how bad the professor had been treating me. No lie. So the next week I came back, the dean shows up to class. The dean shows up to class, and she gives this whole spiel. Now, the whole semester, I've been in this tension. I've been doing my assignments. He's picking it apart, being petty, all this kind of stuff. I'm just turning into assignments because I didn't feel like God. I'm not a quitter. And I didn't feel like God was telling me to leave. I said, no, I'm going to stare this thing down in the face. I am not going to take the bait. I'm not going to let my opposition stand in the way of my obstacle and my next blessing. So I dealt with it. It was a tension I had to manage. I would pray going in during class. So the last night when the dean had come that night, she came to the class and that whole night he had so much nervous energy. They kept putting his hands on me, push me, all this kind of stuff, trying to chum me back up with me all of a sudden because he knew the dean was coming. I really didn't put it all together till afterwards because you got to thank God for grace in the moment that it could have triggered you to do the wrong thing. Come on, I'm sorry, let me pause right there. Is there anybody in here who can thank God that there was a time you'd have caught me at the right time, you'd have got what for? So he's done all this. I'm texting my wife, I text my sister. She all went text. I said, look, I need you, I need you praying, I need you, I said, I'm in this class. Right now in class, the, the dean shows up to class. Here it is, let me get to the point. The dean shows up to class, and she's trying to do damage control. Class, I understand you have some challenges, and we thank God that you're here, and this, that, the other. So God told me this is your moment. The dean was getting ready to leave. I spoke to the dean. I said, can I speak with you? I was pointing to the professor. Can I speak with you as well? So we got a private little office over there. So I got him in the office. I sat down and just looked him in his eyes. I said, number one, you don't put your hands on me. Come on now. Come on. Come on. You got to be direct with people. You all in my personal space, let's be real. I'm a six foot, 200 something pound African American man. Had I done that to you, you'd have been talking about I accosted you, you felt threatened. Y'all, come on, be real with me. So I said, I didn't violate you, I didn't touch you, I didn't get in your space. I said, I feel like you have oppressed me, you've suppressed my voice, and I went into it and explained it. That night, they removed him from the class. He finished out the class, he was removed from the class. A month later, I found out they turned around and terminated him, but it never would have happened had I not managed the tension. If I took the bait, if I failed for what he was putting out there, God couldn't have work. How many of y'all know sometime God will let you go through it so that you can have a testimony? How many of y'all know God will sometime let it look like you're losing so you can really win? How many of y'all know God sometime will take you down before he brings you up? Is there anybody here who can give God some glory? Because God will fight your battles. God will dry your tears. God will pick up your cause. God will take up your case. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it?
Somebody give him a praise up in this house. 